In January 2011, a woman named Sue Perryman... Yeah, that's her. Hello, Sue. Hi, Glenn. In January 2011, Sue Perryman agreed to watch every single episode of classic Doctor Who from the very beginning, even the ones that didn't exist anymore. You know, the ones that definitely haven't been found in Nigeria and shipped back to the BBC in a huge shipping container. No, that would be silly. Sorry, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. Anyway, Sue agreed to watch them all, and the result was a blog. It was all right, I suppose. If you like that sort of thing. Some of the songs were a bit weird, though. Cause I just want a girl who likes who Who's as pretty and as smart as you And if I get bored I could always cheat on you with Nicole She's near my age It's now June 2013. A month has passed since Sue watched the 1996 TV movie with the John Pertwee logo. And life is slowly returning to normal for the Perrymans. But today, Neil, the man who convinced his wife to watch every episode of Doctor Who from the very beginning, there he is, doesn't he look tired? Shut off, Glenn. Shut it. Anyway, today, Neil is going to ask Sue to reflect on the two and a half years she spent watching Doctor Who from the very beginning. He really should have done this ages ago, but he's been writing a book, which, knowing him, he'll probably try to plug in this video. I can't do it! Do it! I can't! But stick with it because there's an exciting hint about the future of the Wife in Space project at the very end. I don't know about you, but I hope they decide to watch Tenko from the very beginning. Women bow! So my first question is, do you miss the experiment? I do miss the experiment a lot actually. I miss... I miss it. It was part of our daily routine. What do you miss about it? <laughs> I miss sitting with you for at least half an hour or so, well, probably more, but just spending time together, that was nice. So you don't miss the exciting adventures in time and space? Not really. We've been watching all creatures great and small from the beginning. Is that helping with the withdrawal symptoms at all? It is a bit. It's, um, it's a lot less um, dodgy sets and a lot more cute, fluffy animals. And of course, Pity Davison. Peter Johnson wants to know, you gave Spearhead from Space, The Seas of Doom, and City of Death 10 out of 10, but you never told us which one was your favorite. So which one was it? Do you know, I can't even remember them. I honestly can't remember what happened in each one, to be honest with you. Spearhead from Space, John Pertwee's first story. That was actually quite good, though. Seas of Doom was about the vegetables that try and take over the planet. Yeah. City of Death was the one that was set in Paris. Quite like City of Death. Yeah, I like Paris. You gave 10 out of 10 to all yeah. of them. So. Well, I like them all. <laughs> yeah, I like them all. I have no real preference. I like them all. Robert Dick would like to know if you could watch any classic Doctor Who story right now, just for pleasure, which one would it be? Oh, 10th Planet? 10th <laughs> no, Planet? No, I'm only joking. Probably, um, oh God, I can't remember the name. It's the one, the tower block. Paradise Towers. Paradise Towers, probably, yeah. Or maybe the Gunslingers. Or the Gunfighters, what's it called? It's shouting. Question from Kirk Moore. Do you now understand why Neil loves the show so much? Yeah, I do, actually. I mean, anything that has that amount of history and, um, you know, the fact that it's sort of signposted his life, I can understand exactly why he loves the show. But you're not a fan? Not really. Why not? <sighs> it doesn't excite me. It Maybe it's an imagination thing. You know, I'm just a bit more practical and I think, you know, whereas you have a fabulous imagination, I don't really, but I'm much more practical and I think that's maybe why. But would you defend Doctor Who if someone was slagging it off? <sighs> I do, when we watch the new series. 
Can you sum up your feelings for all the doctors? As a total, or just one at a time? One at a time. Okay, well, okay, my prop here is uh, William Hartnell. Yeah. Um, he was a miserable old git, wasn't he? Oh, am I? I liked him though, but he was a bit miserable. Oh, go away. Patrick Troughton, one of my favourite doctors. Oh, I see. How interesting. Bit of a scruffy drunk, but I still like him a lot. You'd better come in. John Pertwee. He was a pompous twat. As you really ought to try this gorgonzola cheese. It's absolutely delicious. Just horrible to Joe, wasn't he? They wouldn't give her any sandwiches or anything. Like I didn't it. like that about Jeez, I'm afraid the best the steward could do. Oh, that's super. Thanks very much. For heaven's sakes, Joe. What do you think this is, a picnic? Tom Baker, the mad one. You're a beautiful woman, probably. Um, I was a bit sick of him towards the end, actually. Goodbye. Peter Davison, the fit one. Hmm, so I'd noticed. Um, he liked the cricket, didn't he? So, Colin Baker. And it seems on a moment too soon. Um, he was the court jester. Very colourful, wasn't he? Felt a bit sorry for him, though. Oh, no, now I really am finished. And then we have Sylvester McCoy. Stay back. He was the crafty sod. The dark side to him, wasn't there? He had a bit of a dark side. You can design a simple doorknob. Good actor, though. If we fight like animals, we die like animals! And then we have the handsome Paul McGann. <laughs> My one night stand, I would have liked more. So tell me, Sue, who is your favourite doctor? Well, it's got to be Scruffy Drunk. So the one and only Mr Andy Miller wants to know, Having seen them all in action, which doctor is Neil most like? <laughs> Careful. Well, I will probably say, have to say Peter Davison hey. with his black underpants. Who was your favourite companion or companions? Oh, oh um, Ian and Barbara. Would you buy an action figure of Ian Barbara? No. What, what would I do with them? What would I do with a Barbara and Ian doll? Admire them. Matt Smith is leaving the programme this Christmas. How does that make you feel? Oh, that's a bit sad actually. Is he definitely leaving? Yes. It's sad. I like Matt Smith. I think he's great. I think he's a fabulous actor. Who should replace him? Oh, come on, Bunch. What's his name? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> don't put this in. Please don't leave this Cumberbunch. In. Yeah, get it. We're going to put Cumberbunch. Oh, no. What they call that woman off episodes? <laughs> I can't have a woman! Lewis Christian wants to know, what do you think will happen in the 50th anniversary story? Or what do you want to happen? Is there any old faces that you want to come back? Oh, well, it's obvious the great intelligence is going to come back, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. It's obvious. Now, Sue, so, I've written a book based on the blog. Can you tell everyone about it? So the book is called Adventure of the Wife in Space, Living with Doctor Who. And it's basically about Neil's life and how Doctor Who has not changed his life, but maybe has influenced his life, certainly. And also how Neil uses Doctor Who to signpost certain points of his life. But it's also about um, sharing that love for something with somebody that you love or supposed to love. And I guess I'm in it a little bit. You write a chapter, don't you? I do actually write a chapter. It's the best chapter in the book. I'd like to think so. Have you read it yet? I have read it. Is it any good? It's great. <laughs> should people buy it? They should. Where can they get it from? All good bookstores, even the ones that don't pay tax. So now, Sue, we're going to have a game of Choose or Bock. Um, everybody at home obviously knows what Choose or Bock is. If you don't, the rules are now on the screen. Kef McCulloch or Mark Ayres? Mark Ayres. The Seeds of Doom or the Seeds of Death? Seeds of Doom. Ian Levine or John Levine? Do you know how I'm going to say Ian Levine? Tegan or Turlo? Oh, Turlo. Sea Devil or Silurian? Bok. Bessie or the Hoomobile? Hoomobile. RTD or JNT? RTD. The Merka or the Zabi? Zabi was the wasp, wasn't it? 
It was like a wasp. Bog. I don't know. Stuart fell or tip tipping? Oh, Stuart fell's a stuntman, but I don't know what tip tipping is. Stuntman. Okay, Stuart fell. He fell well. <laughs> Marco Polo or the Web of Fear? Oh, the Web of Fear. Well done, you have successfully cleared the choose all bot round. As we record this interview, a rumour is sweeping through fandom regarding the recovery of 90 missing episodes of Doctor Who. Do you believe this rumour? Yes. Why? Why not? It's good. They've got to exist. I looked for them before, didn't I? In um, Kiwi Island's lock-up. Yeah, Couldn't if you, find them. If you can't find them. Yeah, but I didn't really try very hard, did I? And I think if somebody set their mind to it, they could do that. Do you, do, you, do you want them to exist? Yes. Do you want to watch them? Oh yeah, we'd have to, would we have to watch them? It's up to you, I'm not going to force you. Would you watch them in public, say on a blog? You mean just like what we've done? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Would you go watch the entire 60s all over again? Yes, because I'd like to see what Marco Polo really look like. Are you sure you're not a fan? I'm not a fan. Given the chances that are seeing the Web of Fear anytime soon are pretty slim, would you ever consider doing anything like this again with a different TV series? I would actually, because we could spend some time together again. That'd be nice. What would you like to do? Our creature's great and small. He's never going to get that cat. Hey up, he's taking his clothes off. Oh, nice chair. Oh, lovely Welsh dresser. Careful. No, we're not doing that. Uh, okay. Crossroads. <laughs> This program is a dog's dinner. Look at it. It's a mess. There's the evidence. What about the new series of Doctor Who then? My third husband. Oh yes. Oh yes. We're definitely not doing that. If we're not doing that, what series are we going to do then? Okay, thank you Susan. Is there anything else you'd like to say to all our readers before we leave you forever? Oh. Well, it's not going to be forever because if these new ones come back then we'll be doing it again, I guess. I would just like to say thank you, thank you so much for supporting the blog and for all the lovely comments. Uh, the book. Yeah, and please buy the book. You interrupted me. You do realise this murky thing's just going to look like a big green eaten mess? So, thank you very much. Thank you, my beautiful husband. The 23rd of November, 1963. An unearthly child, 100,000 BC. 26 years up until survival. Here's a list of all the stories up until the revival. From the savages, snake dance, smugglers and gunfighters, and makers, seeds of doom, Silurians and sensorites. A web planet and a web and a hand of fear. There's a space wheel museum, spearhead colony frontier. Ark of infinity and ark in space. Of evil, there's mind, Daleks, planet and face. On Mars, there are pyramids, the moon has a base. Warriors, fury from the deep, the underwater men Eight. Abominable snowmen, dominators and quarks. Delta and the bannermen and the ark. Use a ghost light or a dragon fire if you're in the dark to see the time and the Rani bringing her friend Mark. Come on, base. We've got work to do. Next time. On the wife in space. Underworld Enlightenment and Time Lash and Carney. Val of Monsters Earthshock, Caves of Androzani, Sharda and Kinder and Marco Polo. Robot and Meglos, Terminus and Inferno. For an ingenious show that does what other shows won't. Watch Attack of the Cybermen, or better still, don't. War Machines and Games and Daleks Master Plan. And the TV movie starring Paul McGann. Two, three, and five Doctors Galaxy 4. To Doomsday, Invasion of the Dinosaurs. Of Death are a Robots and Ambassadors. And the City to the Daleks and green seeds and there's more. Genesis of the Daleks? Davrosh, you're insane! There's the claws of Axos and Morbius's brain. Of Terror, Vervoid, Gorton, Zygons, Macra and Rain. The Chase, Burnt Cinders floating around in Spain. Next time on The Wife in Space. 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 The Daleks, Dalek Invasion of Earth, The Crusade, The Celestial Toymaker, The Tenth Planet, The Faceless Ones, Enemy of the World, Curse of Paladon, Sea Devils, Monster of Paladon, The Sontaran Experiment, The Android Invasion, Talons of Wing Chiang, Horror Fang 
Wrath, the Invisible Enemy, Image of the Fendal, Ribos Operation, Sons of Blood, the Power of Crawl, Breach from the Pit Warriors, Gay Black Orchid, Mordred Undead, King's Demons, The Awakening, Twin Dilemma, Vengeance on Varus, the Ultimate Foe, Paradise Towers, Happiness Patrol, Battlefield, Curse of Henry, and the Mutants, Myth Makers, Massacre, Mysterious Planets, Mind Warp, Legopolis, which introduced Janus, Mind Robber, Castro Valva, Mask of Mandragora, Deadly Assassin, and the Androids of Tara, Time Monster Warrior, Meddler Flight and Invasion, The Invasion, Silver Nemesis, and Visitation, Space Pirate, Planet of the Spiders, Giants, and Fire, Tomb of the Cybermen, The Leisure Hive, Romans, Crotons, Demons, Rescue, Nightmare of Eden, Ice Warriors, Keys of Marinus, Edge of Destruction, Horns of Nyman, Highlanders, and Keeper of Trark, Frontios, The Aztecs, and Revenge of the Cybermen, Daleks, Resurrection, Revelation, and Day, Destiny, Power, Remembrance, Planet, State of Decay, Armageddon, Factor, Mission to the Unknown, Full Circle on the Galaxy's Greatest Show. Next time on the White in Space. Next time on the White in Space. So there you go. 33 years or so. 160 stories, depending on who you ask, in three minutes. Nerdcore in 7-4, if you will. I'm off now, my tea's getting cold. Next time, I will not be so lenient. <laughs> you know, Sherlock guy. What's his name? Cumberbatch. Yeah, that's him. He'd be great, wouldn't he? I don't think I don't think Moffat would let him go though. You've killed it, Dad.